to all of our guests entering our seminar series today. We thank you. Uh, we're waiting, just allowing a few more guests to enter in, and then we will open the presentation. So give us just one moment, and we will begin momentarily. and introducing Dr. Michael Hodge. Greetings, everyone. We're so glad that you could join us today. And on behalf of the member institutions of the Atlanta University Center Consortium and the Data Science Initiative, I want to welcome everyone to our Atlanta University Center Data Science Seminar Series. Today, we're pleased to have with us Mr. Oliver Van Kirk of United Health Group, which is the founding supporter of the Data Science Initiative. United Health Group is the largest healthcare company in the world and encompasses most aspects of the growing healthcare sector. United Healthcare Group has shown leadership in data science, and Mr. Van Kirk, as Senior Vice President of Human Capital Analytics and Technology, is exemplifying this leadership culture. Oliver currently leads an organization responsible, responsible both for implementing technology solutions to support the digital transformation of human capital programs and delivering insights into strategic workforce outcomes. He has led large transformational efforts, including the redesign of United Health Group's uh, employee listening program, which is establishing a customized measure of employee sentiment. His teams are currently leading the implementation of HR technology solutions to support the integration of over 70,000 acquired employees across South America. Prior to his current role, Oliver was the Vice President of Workforce Analytics and Reporting, where he led the establishment of an enterprise-wide analytics function, implementing uh, transformational business intelligence technology to support the integration of cross-functional data and delivering self-service reporting solutions. Oliver holds a master's degree in human resources and industrial relations from the University of Minnesota, and a bachelor's degree in political science and economics from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Let's welcome, by clicking the hand clap on your screen, Mr. Oliver Van Kirk of United Health Group. We'll have a few words, and then he will introduce our keynote speaker for today's seminar. And please, remember to submit your questions to the Q&A session, and this presentation will be available on our YouTube channel. Thank you, Mr. Okay, Baker. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Hodge. What a, what a privilege and an odd experience it is to listen to your bio read back by somebody of such distinction as yourself. Uh, I, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to, to join you and Dr. Washington in this, in this conversation. And I thought I'd start just with a few words about United Health Group uh, and our commitment to the AUC and its data science initiative. Uh, as you mentioned, United Health Group is the largest healthcare company in the world. And if we, we could advance a, advance a slide here, um, we are founded on a very simple but very profound mission here of helping people live healthier lives and helping the health system work better for everyone, every single uh, member that, and patient that we are privileged to serve. If you could advance one more slide, please. There are uh, over 325,000 employees that work for United Healthcare across the globe, including over 120,000 clinical employees. We have the privilege of serving more than 140 million unique individuals across the globe uh, every day, helping them to receive the care, uh, the advice and the counsel they need uh, to live to their fullest potential. Uh, one more slide here. United Health Group is the, um, is the combination of two distinct business platforms, Optum that brings enabling technology, analytics and services to the healthcare industry and United Healthcare, which is the largest um, insurance uh, company in the, in the world providing health insurance coverage. Our commitment to the Atlanta University Consortium and to the Data Science Initiative um, stems from the deep connection to our strategic focus on leveraging data and analytics to help ensure the best access to care 
and the, the most equitable outcome and the best outco uh, outcomes uh, for health interventions that our patients and members engage in. Data science is a critical discipline uh, being applied to help us understand what is the next best course of action um, in an individual's uh, healthcare treatment. It helps us to identify uh, potential causes and influencers of disease. It helps us to understand the relative e efficacy uh, of the interventions we, we engage in and help us to improve uh, the lives of everyone that we're privileged to serve. So um, when we had the opportunity to begin to work uh, with Dr. Washington and others uh, at the Atlanta Consortium um, and, and see what the vision was that, that she and others were laying out, it was a natural partnership and we're, we are thrilled for the opportunity uh, to support in this way. Uh, I'm, I now will turn the, uh, turn the conversation over to Dr. Washington. I'd like to give you a brief introduction um, to this very distinguished leader uh, that you'll have the privilege of listening to for the next 45 or 50 minutes. Uh, Dr. Washington is a, is a leader in the field of mathematics. She is highly decorated, having just this year received um, fellowship recognition from both the American Mathematical Society as well as the Association for Women um, in Mathematics. She, as the inaugural founder of the Data Science Initiative here at the Atlanta University Consortium, is <clears throat> leading efforts to advance data science and research and teaching across the four historically Black colleges that make up the consortium. This initiative, under her leadership, seeks to advance the creation of data-driven solutions to current and emerging societal problems especially those that pertain to Black America. So without further ado, Dr. Talitha Washington, I will turn the mic to you. Thank you for that kind introduction. It's great to be here with everybody today. Um, like you said, my name is Talitha Washington and I'm the director of the Atlanta University Center Data Science Initiative, which is funded by the United Health Group. So thank you, United Health, for the support to really stand up this initiative to not only serve the Atlanta University Center, but the data science community. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the black revolution in data science. And before I do, I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. <laughs> where, where did I begin? I actually began as an undergraduate student at, Clark, at Spelman College. I came in, I'm originally from Evansville, Indiana. And I participated in the Morehouse Marching Band. I graduated class of 96. I did a fall semester exchange in Mexico and kind of got pulled by the ear by Dr. Jeffrey Amy and Spelman's math department to do undergraduate research. So you can see me there in the upper right in the t-shirt. So I guess I was a bit of a rebel along with one of my colleagues there, Janda Holmes. When I was an undergrad, I presented on the stability of difference equations in the um, undergraduate research day. And in the lower right is a book from Ronald Mickens on difference equations that he gave me when I was an undergrad. And I think I put that book on the shelf and it collected dust, but then when I became a um, mathematical grown-up, so to speak, I actually embarked into difference equations. My research area is dynamical systems, difference equations, and all things modeling. That's that's. Those are, that's my bread and butter. My security advancer just wants to advance. Okay, on its own. So I actually, so I'm from Evansville, Indiana. So after coming to Spelman, I went to the University of Connecticut and earned my master's and PhD in mathematics. And I studied uh, reaction diffusion equations, then went to Duke University, uh, studied and did a postdoc in mathematical biology was at the College of New Rochelle for a couple of years, then the University of Evansville when I earned tenure. Then I went to Howard University, I guess double header, earned tenure again, associate professor. Then I became a program officer at the National Science Foundation. And I find myself coming back home to the Atlanta University Center in my current capacity. So how did I get into data science? So I've had this interesting journey into data science and most people who are in data science do have some interesting twists. Way back long, 10 years ago, I can't believe it's 10 years. I was a faculty consultant in the digital humanities lab at the University of Evansville. So I worked with a student on text analytics. 
So my entry, my segue into data science really was through the digital humanities. 2015, I hosted StatFest, that's from with the American Statistical Association at Howard. And then I did a workshop with the uh, people in psychology and sociology on multivariate research methods. Uh, you gotta love some workshops. Did another one at Utah at the Park City Math Institute, 2016 where we actually did looked at data science over a three week period is very intense. And we actually created a paper, uh, which is one of the foundational papers and talking about undergraduate data science. It's the curriculum guidelines for undergraduate programs in data science. When I came back to Howard in that subsequent semester, I taught co-taught in our, our studio of data science seminar with a colleague of mine who was a geometer. So. <laughs> As they say, data science is for everyone. And then I ended up going to the National Science Foundation where I ran the data science program for the improving undergraduate STEM education and found myself then in Convergence Accelerator looking at artificial intelligence future jobs. So I just had a really interesting, uh, ex varied experiences in data science, both on the research and the administration side. And there in the middle is uh, my graduate student, Shay Adekanye, who uh, works at JP Morgan uh, with machine learning. So. You could do a lot of things with data science. What is data science? Well, the goal of data science is the extraction of useful information from a data set, or maybe that's one way to define it. I don't think anybody really agrees what it is, but the idea is that we have a vast amount of data, a vast amount of information. How can we extract value from that? And there are different techniques that we can employ, and to be frank, there are different types of information sets. So the, the definition for this is, is kind of fluid, we'll say. So this past August, 2020, I became the inaugural director and I'm also a full professor of mathematics at Clark Atlanta University. My, one of my favorite uh, mottos is the Atlanta University motto, which is I'll find a way or make one, which really, I think, uh, defines my directorship here at the Atlanta University Center. So the Atlanta University Center, we are situated, kind of, a little bit kind of southwest of downtown near the West End area. Uh, there are four institutions that are co-located and they we're all um, historically black colleges and universities. There's Clark Atlanta University, which is an R2 co-ed, Morehouse College, which is liberal arts, all male, Morehouse School of Medicine, which is graduate a medical school and Spelman College, which is all female uh, liberal arts institutions. We have a long history of being active in social justice, in particular social justice for African-Americans. Um, shown on the right, there is Morehouse graduate Julian Bond when he was the vice chair of, the, of SNCC. And you know, this was right after he graduated, he's leading the students um, to uh, fight for rights. Now I call it the top the Atlanta student movement because back in March of 1960, students of the student leaders of the Atlanta University Center came together to challenge the scourge of segregation in both public and private facilities in Atlanta. And they submitted a manifesto called an appeal for human rights. So our students, our Atlanta University Center consortium has social justice in its DNA. And we at the data science initiative, we interweave that in everything and all that we do. We have identified two goals for our initiative. One goal is to develop talent. So we wanna be a significant producer of African-Americans with expertise and credentials in data science. Our second goal is to create new knowledge. We wanna lead national efforts to address race, gender, and social justice aspects of data science. As um, we may know, uh, there, is a, there is a void when it comes to the intersection of data science and social justice, social justice for African-Americans. And we're looking to facilitate conversations and also develop uh, research to address um, disparities and to essentially push data science forward. We do this through three mechanisms. We do this through our curriculum, through our research and engagement, engagement across the AUC and all that we do, and also engagement with other institutions and industry partners. Historically, Black colleges have a long history of positioning Black students, um, in particular with STEM degrees. 
So even though HBCUs, we graduate 24% of black students with STEM degrees, you know, we, so we graduate 24% of black students with STEM degrees, we only enroll 10% of all black students. Typically when I go to conferences and if there are other, let's say black mathematicians, data scientists and so on, but we, we have come from HBCUs. So there is something that HBCUs are doing to create uh, black professionals in the field, in particular in the STEM field. On that foundation, we really have a great capacity to address the student supply demand or lack thereof at a national scale, in particular when it comes to diversity. So on the right, even though the employer demand for our data science is high, the student supply is low and we're, we're just, we're not keeping up. So there's a lot of opportunities for us to grow and also to diversify the field. So how are we doing this? Well, we have a data science minor that is underway and that's being built across the Atlanta University Center. So we have all institutions in the Atlanta University Center involved in this fun process. Actually, the, the teams are, are a delight to work with. We aim to prepare our students to obtain, process, analyze, and present complex data, including data related to the African diaspora. We stay true to our mission to position our, and train our students to become leaders of tomorrow and in many respects of today. We have identified six programmatic learning outcomes. One is math, mathematics and statistics, another is programming, modeling, data curation, ethics, and communication. Oftentimes our communication, our, when we talk, ethics and communication tends to rise to, to the topic of our, uh, top of our discussions. Our AUC data science minor team that is building this program is a, spans across the discipline. So our data science is really being built to engage all students. So we have faculty from the decision sciences to biology, social sciences, uh, political science, I mean, you name it, the e-learning technology from the library, so we really have an interdisciplinary approach to the development of our data science minor. So with our six programmatic learning outcomes, we've identified a skeletal framework for the minor. Now I say that it's under construction because it's never over until it's over. But for our data science minor, we have a foundational course. It's entitled Data in the African Diaspora. Then students would choose from a menu of courses in math and statistics, another menu of courses in programming, and then three-ish courses um, from electives. So this is providing a skeletal framework at which a minor would exist at Clark Atlanta, Spelman, and Morehouse, one at each institution where the data in the African diaspora course is shared across the institutions. And that's gonna be a new interesting endeavor. So this data in the African diaspora, we're actually running it this semester as a pilot course. We're running it in Spelman under sociology and Clark Atlanta under social work. You know, we've had a lot of discussions. Where does data science live? Well, data science spans so many different disciplines. It really is a convergence, a true convergence of multiple disciplines to, to really get deep into looking at, in this case, um, how data is used to control, aid, or disenfranchise Black communities. And so we decided to have a spreadsheet-based course because we really want the students to develop data science thinking. How do we think about data science? What are the important questions to ask and how do we go in that direction? We also have some other interesting courses here being currently taught at the AUC. One is being taught by Professor Nathan Alexander where he took, he's taking a basic statistics class and in infusing historical and futuristic frameworks such as the data studies commissioned by W.B. Du Bois who was a professor at Atlanta University. So back in the 1890s, W.B. Du Bois did this interesting um, Paris exposition uh, called the Exhibit of American Negroes and where he basically created all of these innovative um, data visualizations. So having that historical context grounded in the African-American experience and embedded in the courses in our teaching really is part, like I said, this is part of the DNA of what we do here at the Atlanta University Center. We also, the Atlanta University Center Data Science Initiative is also going to roll out some learning and research communities that is led and co-led by our faculty. 
So one of them is called Leveraging R to Conduct Classroom Performance Analytics in Introductory Biology and Chemistry courses. The idea is that in these introductory courses, we have a lot of grades. Maybe R could help employ and get some ideas about student performance, assessment, tracking, and so on. So this was um, developed, co-developed, and is going to be co-led by Drs. Wallace Sharif and Ethel Varen of Morehouse College. We also have another learning research community on GitHub and the Open Science Framework for Data Science. This is led by Justin De La Cruz from the library. And the idea is that faculty will come together, look at GitHub, look at OSF, what can we do with it? And then also then they'll turn around and help and train other faculty and or staff who are interested. So it really is this peer AUC collaborative learning and research environments that I, I'm really excited about. Last summer, our undergraduate students participated in a summer undergraduate research pro program. Topics varied anywhere from exploration of suicide rates using data science to racial diversity in medical research to data in the humanities. And this was student driven uh, under faculty expertise. And we really look forward to having another undergraduate research program this summer that's underway. We also have um, faculty across the AUC who are super active and super amazing. And so Dr. Alfred, he is a part of the HBCU Data Science Consortium that's led by Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, FAMU. They are going to have an inaugural workshop on building the pillars of data science held on February 19th and 20th. So if anybody wants more information, please reach out to Dr. Watkins. Morehouse School of Medicine is also kicking out a data science lecture series. And this will begin on February 17th at 12.30, it's on Zoom. And it's co-led by Dr. Peter McLeish, who's at the Morehouse School of Medicine. So it's, it's super great to see more and more activity around the intersections of data science and other disciplines. And as I'm talking, if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A. We are also having partnerships with industry. So one of the partnerships with uh, Coca-Cola and SAP actually is giving birth to an AUC virtual computer lab. We're calling it a pilot because this is something that will be new that we will test out. But when we say partnership, it really is we sit down and talk with them, talk about the software. Yesterday we had a demonstration and Coca-Cola and SAP were there asking questions right along with us. So when we engage with industry, it really is not just the industry kind of passing by, it's you know building those relationships and having those meaningful partnerships. We envision that this virtual computer lab will facilitate the lab environment where instructors can really have an active learning approach with the students through a sharing of screens, messaging back and forth that will really support our, both of our data science research and curriculum. So that will be forthcoming. And if you're an AUC faculty member interested in this with some software needs, please let us know. So a lot of students ask the question, and it, I guess it's getting that time, right? It's February. Uh, where do I go after graduation? What do I do? Well, if you study data science, and this is taking from a friend of mine at Fisk University who runs the program there. Fisk University is an HBCU in Tennessee and is the first um, institution and in undergraduate or university in Tennessee to have a data science major ever. So it's pretty cool. So what can you do? You can work for companies, Google, Apple, Amazon. Uh, Microsoft is moving down here to Atlanta. Um, there are different job titles for data science, anywhere from game developer to system administrator, data analyst, so varied. There is also, also opportunities for research and graduate studies. You can have a PhD in data science, computer engineering, software engineering, masters in, in computer science or data science. And you know, people also go off into the national labs where they do research in tech companies. And there are other related jobs in data science and government at the NSF. We had um, data scientists there, uh, marketing, tourism, recreation, you name it. Data science really does span the sectors. And what about employment opportunities here in the AUC? Well, you know, if you're on the job market looking for a faculty position, or you know, we are hiring here across the AUC, 
Clark Atlanta has two positions opening in math that focus on data science. There are also two positions in cyber physical systems, and they're looking for expertise in machine learning and cybersecurity. Morehouse School of Medicine has a job advertisement for a bioinformatician. And that's exciting. I don't, I don't want to say that word five times twice, you know, fast. <laughs> bioinformatician. I love that word. There's, they are also hiring a director of data analytics and integrity. Morehouse School of Medicine is actually has multiple job postings around building a health equity tracker, which will be a public data and visualization platform. So I'm super excited to see how that will grow and expand. Morehouse, it will be soon announcing a tenure track assistant professorship in sociology, and they'll be specifically looking for expertise in data analytics and data visualization. Spellman and there is looking for a professor of systems, anywhere from internet of things to cloud computing. And in the math department at Spelman, they're looking somebody specifically for data science. So we're seeing, it's so great to see this explosion of interest and commitment um, to growing the data science expertise across the AUC from all of the institutions. And our work is really grounded in our students and we love to co-lead with our students. We have a graduate fellows program and over this, day, over this academic year, we have five graduate fellows. Shayla Snipes, she's a social work doctoral student at Clark Atlanta, and she's working on developing a sports analytic course in Coursera. Blake Glover is a social work doctoral student at Clark Atlanta, and she's also working on that Coursera course for sports analytic. She's also looking at the influence of COVID on African-American communities. Cameron Randall is a higher education leadership doctoral student at Clark Atlanta, and he's working with faculty. So all of these students work with faculty um, to create a course entitled Data Science and Social Justice. So this will be a graduate course at Clark Atlanta. Amber, Board, Amber Boyd is a mathematics master's student at Clark Atlanta, and she's conducting research to develop a grant proposal to secure financial support for curriculum development for the center. And Joyce Stinson is a public health master's student at Morehouse School of Medicine, and she's working to host a data science challenge involving human trafficking, and her work will inform how we do future challenges. So our graduate students, we are blessed with amazing graduate students who are really um, doing some innovative work. So that data science challenge that Joyce Stinson is working with that I had mentioned is looking at child trafficking. One of our goals really is to address social, address race, gender, and social justice aspects of data science. And this data challenge reflects that. So a, just a little bit of background, and this was in a report from the Congressional Black Caucus Foundations, that there were 57.5% of all juvenile prostitution arrests are Black children. 40% of sex trafficking victims were identified as Black women. And traffickers admittedly believe trafficking Black women would land, land them less jail time than trafficking white women have caught. So through this data challenge, not only will the students explore and employ and learn um, data science techniques, they will also learn that these difficult conversations around what is happening in society in the hopes that they will be able to bring some viable solutions and some viable insights so we can solve some of these problems and challenges. And back in 2016, I went to ISERM, which is a workshop in, in Providence, it's at Brown University. It was on predictive policing. And in this workshop, I, we looked at calls for service. So if somebody says, you know, they call 911, they, the answer is, you know, hi, this is 911, you know, may I help you? Something like that. And so we had that calls for service data. And what I did was I looked at disturbance. And if you notice here on the graph, you know, this is 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., not many calls for disturbance. And if you go around the time span, but then once you get into the wee hours of the night, you get this red dot over there near Providence College. So we just played around with the data sets, did some geostat modeling. And I was at this workshop, it was challenging because I was the only US underrepresented minority there. And so when I would ask questions, I would ask questions because it was my friends who went to jail who ended up you know, being chased down by police and canines and things. So my experience coming from a center city with um, police not being the nicest, we'll say, 
was quite different from the other participants. And when I had asked them, I said, well, why don't we look at um, delay response time with respect to where people live? People were like, well, why is that a thing? And there was a song back in the day, 911 is a joke because if you call them, you know, you probably get your pizza faster. So, but asking those questions of data sets with the insights of how the, the social constructs impact the data and also the questions, we really need those diverse perspectives so we can ask the right questions. Predictive policing models have been, um, let's say, questioned, and that's probably an understatement because there, there's a pred pool in Oakland, and in this pred pool, Black people would be targeted by predictive policing at roughly twice the rates of whites. And the issue is that these tools, these predictive analytics data science tools, are being used by police, by entities to, let's say, over-target uh, certain demographic groups, in this case, uh, Black people, which is a problem. And so this past, last year, there was a group of mathematicians that actually called for people to stop interacting with police departments because the math community, a large number of people in the math community felt that we were contributing to the ills that then the police departments would employ. And it, 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 these things have to be remedied. Another challenge in data science is facial recognition. So, here is Robert Julian, Brock Williams, with his wife and his two kids. So imagine you go home, you know, you see your wife and kids, you're, you're just kind of walking up the driveway and the police handcuff you in front of your kids, throw you in a car. And as a parent, that probably has to be the most, one of the most humiliating experiences. What happened was that the police had thought that he was a robber of a different incident. However, he was falsely accused. He told them, this is not me, right? You all think black men look alike, which in AI, sometimes they, it does, unfortunately. I mean, they took his mugshot, fingerprints, DNA, held him over overnight. All of that time passed and it was not him. And the detective said to his partner, I guess the computer got it wrong. But when we think about the impact on our families, on our communities of being wrongfully accused, because a computer algorithm misidentifies you because of your race, there is something that's really wrong with that. So recently, um, there, so, um, there was a Google researcher, um, Tim Nankaroo, who was, how do you say it, let go, that's probably an understatement, from Google. Uh, and this was uh, public, you could probably go to her Twitter page and catch up if you haven't seen it. She had done, some, done research in one of her papers, for example, was on gender shades. And they looked at uh, classification systems by, on three different platforms. And it, if you look at the percentage at the top, if you're a darker female, the accuracy is way lower than if you were male or lighter female. Meaning that if we're looking at gender, our facial recognition software, and if, if we're selling this to police departments, if you're a darker female, you probably get misrecognized more often. And then that obviously would have negative consequences um, for either misincarceration and so on. Unfortunately, um, recent last year, she wrote a paper. Google said that it doesn't meet our bar for publication. There's a lot of suspect as to why Google would have to review a paper and not the external entity to review it. And many believe that she was pushed out of Google for some of these inconvenient truths that she was saying, needing transparency and needing accountability in AI. She's also one of the co-founders of Black and AI. Another incident that we saw back in 2016 was the voter suppression. This was how the Trump campaign used big data to deter Miami-Dade's Black communities from voting. So what happened was they, they took this data set, the company took a data set, and this was on the um, I-95 corridor of Miami-Dade County, targeted, specifically targeted <laughs> Black voters, got all of their information on Facebook, social media, and specifically sent them false advertisements, disinformations, and information and misleading messages 
to get them to not vote, to deter them from not voting. So these voters were in their database, these voters were actually marked for deterrence. So 25% of these were black, even though they only made up 13% of voters. And so this company, Cambridge Analytica, they offered this voter disengagement as a service. So this was a service in the United States and their internal documents, and this is what um, Christopher Wiley said, their internal documents that I have seen that would make reference to this tactic, the firm would target African-American voters and discourage them from participating in elections. And so we are, we are reminded about the inabilities for African-Americans to vote in this country, but now we have entered into a new era of voter suppression of Black people in this country through data science and through AI. And if we can, if people can actually use this technology to get a certain social group to behave in a certain way, for me, that, that's a bit scary. We've also seen other scary incidents happen as of late, and our country is still trying to figure out how do we interpret what we saw in January on TV? How are we interpreting, you know, this, this crazy um, takeover of the Capitol building? In contrast, on the lower left, we are reminded of the people in the Black Lives Matter movement, how they were treated, and how when the people who essentially stormed the Capitol were not treated. And it's disheartening. We do though have hope in that, you know, from, from the HBCUs, we proudly develop leaders that will, you know, we pray that they will make for a better future and a better tomorrow. And this um, tweet on the lower right is from a Morehouse graduate. He said, if a Morehouse man would become a US Senator, while a Howard alum is the vice president and both were aided by a Spelman woman, I never, never, never want to hear any more talk about HBCUs not preparing you for the real world. And we really pride our students in preparing to address these hard problems. Last year in May, we saw in the news here at the Atlanta University Center, how two of our students were tased and arrested on live te television. It reminds me of going back to 1960 when our students had to fight for freedom, had to make an appeal for human rights. And unfortunately, we're still fighting for those. But now it, what we're doing with the data science initiative is fighting for those through data science. So this really, this presentation really is a call to the black revolution in data science to respond to the call, to respond to the call along with us. So what do I mean by revolution? Well, from the dictionary, a sudden radical or complete change, activity or movement designed to affect fundamental changes in the socioeconomic situation, and a fundamental change in the way of thinking about or visualizing something. In this case, thinking about how we are using data science, how can we use data science really for, for everyone so that no one is disenfranchised and we're using it in a way that's ethically responsible, um, minimizes bias and is grounded on ethics. And as the um, Data for Black Lives says on the website, discrimination now is a high tech enterprise. So I just wanna give a promo that in a couple of weeks, we are going to, in this um, seminar series, we're going to have a session on data and the black vote. We'll be joined by Robert Patillo, who is a Clark Atlanta alum and executive director of Rainbow Push. And we're gonna have an interesting interplay with the American Mathematical Society, Dr. Karen Sachs. She's, she's been on the Hill for many years, mathematician, and Ron Wasserstein, who's the executive director of the American Statistical Association. So we'll have a panel on this interplay between data and the black vote. All of this work really is supported by a fantastic, what I call a dream team. So there's me, the, the director, uh, Bettina Gardner is the internal program manager who's uh, amazing and very talented and gets everything done and organized. Tommy Taylor, who, who is an artist at heart, he's our communication specialist. He's in week two. We're super excited to have him on the team. Nora Patman, um, she's the AUCC executive's assistant. She hangs out with us part of the time uh, to help work out, build out our development fundraising portfolio. Tamla Fordson, make sure that we're all connected with the AUC consortium. And she, she is a, a woman of patience. 
And really with this team, we bring that AUC passion for social justice to advance data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and cybersecurity to address both ethics and, and bias with a focus on Black America. So as, as we move forward with our data science initiative, I'm always reminded of W.B. Du Bois, who must have been, you know, just imagining him sitting at his desk at Atlanta University here in the AUC, uh, thinking about ways of how to tell the story of, of Blacks in the U.S. In this case, I think he said Negroes in, in the U.S. And the way he did it was through pictures. He actually spearheaded visualization to tell the story of Blacks in the United States. And we hope to carry on and we aim to carry on his legacy in data visualization to really um, empower and, and be empowering for everyone, not just Blacks, but really for everyone so that no demographic group is disenfranchised, that we all can participate, we all can join in with data so we can make some data-driven decisions to benefit us all. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Washington, for that great presentation. Um, I'm going to actually ask Ms. Gardner to uh, tell us about the poll that popped up that everyone should have seen when it popped up, and uh, to also encourage you to continue to enter your questions into the, into the Q&A portion of this presentation. Ms. Gardner. Good afternoon. I'm Bettina, and I'll get to the poll. I'll give you a, a few moments to <clears throat> for those that hadn't seen it. To, to go ahead and vote on our poll. Just wanted to get some questions about each of you. I've been dropping links in the chat. Uh, we will follow up the webinar with an email to everyone. We can put those links there as well. We encourage you to um, find us on YouTube. You can find us on, our, on Facebook as well. We also have our website in there. And we are encouraging all of our undergraduate students to take a look. We are a part of the Master Modeler competition, which is a data science challenge. And it is focused on erasing human trafficking. So we did put the links for that there. If you're an undergraduate student, sign in and um, we'll help you find a group and we'll tell you all about it. And we're doing a lot with uh, the, the Master Modeler competition this February. So I'm going to close the poll now. And also you can still at the bottom use the Q&A to insert questions. We'll be doing the uh, Q&A session just after the poll results. So you should all be able to see our poll results there. So Right now we have 74%, 40 people are not students. So a lot of working professionals and people who aren't in school. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And we see that we have 26% of our audience are students. So hopefully for the students, for everybody, but the students that are interested in data science, please stay in, in contact and in touch with us. We also have a newsletter that we send out to AUC community. And, oh, wait, let me share it. I'm sorry, there we go. You should be able to see the poll results now. Um, we, we hope that um, students can really participate and we send out opportunities every month that are available to students and faculty in the AUC. Um, we see our breakdown of students. We have quite a few. The largest would be the master students, but we have a few freshmen, no sophomores. So I guess we have to push more and get more sophomore in here. Looking further, we have 56% female, 43% male and 2% other. Let's see, this is always inter interesting. We have 44% of our participants today are here in the state of Georgia. So hello um, to all our Georgians and for everybody outside, um, we welcome you. Thanks for tuning in. And if you're, um, when, when travel is back open, if you're ever in the, in the area, come down to the AUC and visit us. And then I wanted to know who was interested in data science challenges and competitions. And we have 13 people who are, so please make sure to check the link for the Master Modeler competition on erasing human trafficking. We'd love for you to join and get with the team. The teams must be two to four people and they can be across the AUC. So Morehouse and Spelman and Clark students can all team up um, together. They don't just have to work with their school. For the people who are unsure, click the link anyway, sign up and um, we wanna be connected with you so we can tell you more about these types of challenges and also about our data science club, which is open to undergraduates and graduate students to help students be prepared for uh, data science challenges where you can win money. And then um, are you registered for our February 26th webinar, Data in the Black Vote? 
I have 87% of people saying no. Luckily, you can all change this. The link is in the chat, so please register. That is going to be a really, really interesting webinar at the end of the month. Also, we have 42% of people have not subscribed on our YouTube. We will always post the recordings of these webinars there, and we're also adding other great video content, so please subscribe so you can get those updates. And then just to see how many people are from within inside the AUC, we have 37% or 20 people out of the 100, and, uh, 100 people that are on the, on the webinar, and then out of, uh, and then 34 that are not. not of course, everybody um, did not vote, but of those of you who did vote, um, we about half, over half of the participants did vote. And so we do have a good split there of people who are from inside and outside of the AUC. So again, welcome. Use all the, um, the links that, that are in the chat and we will send a follow-up after, afterwards. So now I'll close out so we can get to the Q&A. Thank you, Ms. Gardner. Okay. So um, we do have a few questions and please keep adding them to the Q&A if you would. Um, we have a few questions here. Um, I, I wanna just deal with one myself um, right away. It says, can other HBCUs join this consortium? Well, uh, the answer to that is no, you can't join the Atlanta University Center Consortium, but I think you mean engage with the data science uh, initiative. The answer to that is definitely yes. Would you like me to answer that, Dr. Hodge? I do, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, okay, so the Atlanta University Center Data Science Initiative does partner with other HBCUs. And we do have regular meetings where um, those at HBCUs who are leading data science initiatives, we meet and we talk once a month. If you are interested in that, if you are leading a data science initiative, please come talk to us and we would like to network. It, you know, your network is your net worth, as they say. But yes, and, and there are other ways that we could partner. You could feel free to reach out with us and we'd be happy to engage with you. Thank you. And we have a question from, um, I'm presuming a student. Um, thanks for a very nice presentation, Dr. Washington. What sort of courses? in mathematics, computer science, statistics, machine learning, et cetera, will a student need to take in order to have a successful career in data science research? So I'm sure Alba is probably chuckling. He's actually a friend of mine. He's a biomathematician at Arizona State. Oh yeah, he's awesome and amazing. So what courses do people usually take? Well, so data science as a discipline is, is you know, it's like the word line point, you know, in math is, is not defined. We are working as a community to define it, but we have yet to converge on something that everybody agrees on. So, but some, there are some foundational aspects that could be argued, um, not 100%, but could be argued as fundamental for data science. Uh, programming, you can think of anywhere from Java, Python, C, C++, R, uh, what have you. Um, data structures in, in Java or data structures in C++, could be highly recommended, um, not required, but highly recommended. Also, if you, there are other advanced programming uh, could also strengthen. There are some quantitative uh, ideas that people would like to have. If you're going off into data science, uh, some math, right? Math, everybody loves math. Um, it could, but it really depends on which avenue you take. If you wanna go to graduate school in data science, you want to have at least, that's a lower bound, calculus one, but if you were going to graduate program and like master's in data science, you would want to have um, linear algebra. So linear algebra becomes pretty important. Calculus, linear algebra. And of course, with linear algebra, you can think multivariate as well. And again, if you're going for graduate level work, um, introduction to prop and stat. Now, if you're looking to go into data science, where's data science interplay with other items, there are a lot of people who upskill via either Coursera or edX and just get and you know we're kind of all sequestered right now so people are really taking advantage of a lot of these edX Coursera courses to upskill in in data science to get some of these um, skills down and so we, we see people coming into data science with a, a non-traditional educational approach so to speak where it wasn't like a class that they took at university it was something they did on the side as a hobby um, like playing tennis <laughs> they go do, get some uh, Coursera courses or edX or what have you. 
but that that's what I would say uh, programming stats um, linear algebra for the higher ones and multivariable for the higher ones. Very good. So um, let's see here. Um, with respect to policing, Atlanta recently experienced a spike in crime and there are calls for increasing policing. I am not aware of data science work that teases out the complexities of that rise. Could you speak to this or even whether there should be a dedicated focus within the AUC uh, data science initiative with respect to policing and incarceration? Yeah, so I think he must be, um, Charles, you on, you on my phone or something? Actually, I was talking with a student about this yesterday, looking at police, policing and crime. Um, so we have not looked yet about policing and crime in Atlanta. That is a, an interesting project um, to look at it by like Latlon do a geo um, statistical analysis about how the crime progresses over time and where and who and how and all the rest of that. But we haven't embarked on that, but it sounds like a good project idea. I'd be happy to speak with you more about that if you're interested. Um, but yeah, there, and I think also to your point, there's a lot of work that can be done where data science can be leveraged to inform how and what we're doing. And perhaps we could then find new ways of doing things better. Thank you. There's, a, there's an interesting question in here from Joseph um, that I think uh, you may be able to address in a maybe um, futuristic uh, response. Uh, he's asking about, uh, he's a master's student in pure mathematics, uh, and he would like to reorient toward data science. Is it possible to earn a master's at AUC in any of these fields? Yeah, so right now you can, we don't have a master's program yet in data science per se. This fall, Morehouse School of Medicine will have a master's program in health analytics. And if you come back, there is a panel on how to build a data science program at HBC, and it's gonna focus on HBCUs. So a member from that panel will be here. Bettina, I don't remember what day the panel is now, um, but she'll, she'll say it in a moment. But oftentimes what I found was like, so for my um, grad student, even though we looked at um, dynamical systems, um, those and, and non-standard finite difference schemes of dynamical systems, on the side, he would take these Coursera courses and edX courses, and I would also teach topics courses in data science. And so even though his research work wasn't in data science per se, you know, in, instead of you know, a pastime would be really to do the courses on edX, to do the course on Coursera, and just to learn this. So some people, like if you have a master's in math, at some in some cases you can you know, have that discipline and actually acquire those skills through some of these online open um, software programs. And to be frank, you know, when I wash my dishes in the morning, I actually enjoy watching people's uh, lectures and machine learning just to get different ideas of what how people are thinking about it. So there's a lot of information out there and a lot of different, we'll say non-traditional ways um, to get information about data science. And depending on your background, it could, um, indicate how you go into data science. A lot of people go into data science in, in a nonlinear path. We're seeing an explosion of data science graduate level programs, both at the master's and now at the PhD. Oftentimes it's, it's a mix, it's a hybrid, because again, people are kind of figuring out what and how it is. But you know, I'd be happy to talk with you offline about different possibilities here in the Atlanta University Center. And uh, Amanda Causey asked a, a very good question. Has there been data science backing any social justice work such as REI, Racial Equity Institute? Um, she talks about that they're currently trying to uh, do some of the work locally and want to back it using the best uh, data sources that they can. So that's, a, that's an interesting question. Like, and, and that's one of the things in data science, because you want to make sure that the data you're pulling in isn't biased. The way you're handling data, you don't incorporate any bias, and I'm saying bias pretty loosely, but then you also don't want that interpretation then to um, propagate bias moving forward. And so there is work in the, um, in the, in our community where they're looking at how do you mitigate and handle these biases in different ways. 
At the University of Michigan, there's an Institute for Framework for Integrative Data Equity Systems. How do you create these data equity systems to mitigate or, or minimize bias? So there are different ways in which they're doing it. One of the challenges is to make sure that when we are looking at data science, in particular for an ethics and bias uh, perspective, that we have people who are of diverse backgrounds at the table asking the hard questions and having those conversations. Some of these conversations around um, race in data science are new for a, a lot of people, we'll say it that way, even though they have to be had, you know, we proceed with patience and, and we proceed with the foresight that, that we will come to a place where we can remedy and really address these biases and ethics in a, in a meaningful way, because it will take all of us to figure out how to first undo some of these ills that have negatively impa impacted the society, but then how do we move forward from this? How can we actually leverage it so we, we don't disenfranchise any group? And I'd like to kind of follow uh, that up with a, a question from Myron Williams. Uh, as we consider the ineffectiveness of facial recognition AI, is anyone concerned about this or uh, the ways in which this can be a double-edged sword? Uh, will better algorithms or more data make Big Brother, in quotes, able to negatively impact our communities? Well, we saw with the uh, voter deterrence, where I guess it was kind of big brother in an awkward sort of way, that did specifically target groups of people. And there, I, it's not, it's not, it wouldn't be a foreign concept that you could employ facial recognition to target um, certain groups of people to do something that's, let's say, not positive. So we do have uh, this idea of a data science ethics where we do want to have some sort of code of ethics, kind of similar to what the doctors um, take, adhere to, like they, they intend to do no harm, they intend to adhere to bias and ethics. So this is actually, a, a um, we'll say, a thing in, in the data science field that we do have some sort of code of conduct. We don't have a national code of conduct standard, but there is the idea that we should proceed with ethics. The, the, I find that the challenge comes from what we don't know, what's in our blind spot and moving things forward and moving data science forward in a way that impacts policy, that impacts how, let's say, Uncle Sam or what you call it, Big Brother interacts with people or impacts how people are treated. Now, so, and if you, if you don't know it's there, if it's in your blind spot, if your bias is hidden from you, you could inadvertently do harm to real people. And so for me, that, that's kind of where my passion lies is how do we make sure that we have the different voices at the table, we have the different voices, both creating, developing the data science, interpreting it and employing it so we can do this in a way that's responsible and really reflects um, a high level of ethics and a high level of standards. So uh, I'm going to uh, take privilege here and ask the last question since we're at the end of the hour. Um, and it will uh, engage uh, uh, both Dr. Washington and Mr. Van Kirk in the response to this and they can decide who's gonna answer it first. Um, what types of support can industry and philanthropy provide uh, for the data science initiative and others like it? Um, in, in, in the way in which uh, the model that UHG's commitment uh, has set, um, you know, uh, with not just the big gift of money, but also with their ongoing engagement. So I'll let you decide which one will answer first and which one will finish us up. Well, I guess I, I can start. Um, so when, first, when we say partnerships, it has to be mutually beneficial, mutually beneficial to the person we are partnering with and also mutually beneficial to us. Let me start with the negative. Typically what we get from industry folks, not all the time, but sometimes I'll say it that way, the industry folks wanna come and they just want to recruit our students and that's it. They have some numbers to hit and that's it. And the challenge for us is that we're not career services, right? We do wanna provide our students access to jobs and things like that. But it really is how can we have meaningful engagement with industry beyond just hitting some recruitment number, which is important. That's important. 
But there is so much beyond that where you can build relationships where either we can have discussions around our curriculum. What does our curriculum look like? What do you think our students should need? We had those discussions last year, spring. Um, like I said, just recently, virtual computer lab. What are some of the questions we should ask? We invited SAP and Coca-Cola to join with us and, 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 and have fun with the demo and ask those questions. So it really is walking alongside with us as we develop out data science, walking alongside with our students to really support and guide their development in data science, both at the skill level and both in positioning them to become data science leaders of tomorrow. Because if, if we really wanna, at least in my mind, right? If we really wanna see our students, which they will, go in and make these positive impacts. We have to do this in partnership with industry. There are a lot of tech companies, we'll say on the West Coast, that have been cited for, let's say, not being that inclusive of Black employees. And so we could have partnerships around, well, maybe there's some technology gains that we can have. Maybe there's some ways in which we can help them think through how can they make a more welcoming environment, more conducive environment to support diverse populations. So there has to be something beautiful you know, mutually beneficial there. So we do invite um, industries to come with us. We will be developing and rolling out an industry partnership program very, very soon. Uh, we have one more person to get on the staff. So we're really excited about growing and expanding that and developing the data science work together. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you uh, have a, a 30 seconds left for me to comment on that, but while Dr. Washington is correct, many of us in industry are obviously very motivated to get access to the best talent, the best minds, the best thinking in the world uh, to staff critical jobs. Uh, there are the benefits to our partnership go well beyond uh, our recruiting potential opportunities. And this conversation, so much of what Dr. Washington described today uh, around really understand, exposing the blind spots that uh, we have in the discipline and the application of data science to, in our case, or in industry's case, business problems or business questions. Um, this is a place where in the university setting, there is a freedom and an opportunity to explore questions from multitude of angles um, that we don't necessarily have that capacity to do inside of industry. And the partnership here can allow us um, to stay true to our commitment to removing biases from data science algorithms that are applied to understanding next best course of action for healthcare intervention um, with the, the room and the, and the broad based exploration that Dr. Washington and her colleagues across the historically black uh, colleges can um, dig into in many more meaningful ways. And my, my hope over the long term of the partnership is that we learn a tremendous amount from the work that you all will advance together and that there are uh, learnings and applications we can take back then into the context in which we're applying. So that's the that I see as a benefit well beyond uh, one of recruiting. Thank you very much. I am going to now thank everyone for joining. I'm gonna turn it back over to Ms. Gardner to uh, close us out and give us any information she needs to make sure that we're aware of like uh, February 26th uh, uh, a seminar that is uh, coming and, uh, and then we will end the program. Thank you. So if you really enjoyed this content, we would love for you to join us again on Friday, February 26th at 12 noon. The topic will be data and the black vote. I just dropped the link in the chat. So go ahead and register now. Um, as you may have noticed, it filled up fast here. Also for our undergraduates, please sign up for our master modeler competition on ending child trafficking. And we will also have a follow-up email to all attendees. Thank you so much for joining us and have a lovely weekend.